we will move on to the Ball State Cardinals. Break my time down here. Uh, Ball State. Last year, everybody thought was going to be a big, big season for the Cardinals and head coach Mike New. But the truth of the matter is, they went six and seven. They were lucky to make a bowl game. Uh, they went four and four in conference. Um, but last year, they were number one in returning production from a team that went what seven and one uh, in the yeah. COVID shortened season. Like they played really, really well, and then last year uh, just did not turn out the way that anybody expected it to. They lost their quarterback Drew Plitt. They lost the wide receiver, like a long-time star wide receiver, Justin Hall. Safety Bryce Cosby is gone. Both linebackers, Thomas and Albright, are gone. Uh, the right guard, Curtis Blackwell, out of here. I, this is this is not good. Like, they are number 127 in the country in returning production. Um, and it's, I mean, it's not good across the board. Like, their, their roster strength overall right now is number 125 in the country. That is... You know, bottom six in FBS. Definitely not good. Uh, they do have, you know, some guys that, that are that are sturdy. You got wide receiver Johannes Tyler. They got running back Carson Steele, linebacker Clayton Cole, cornerback Amichi Uzodinma, the third, or the second, excuse me. Um, they have a lot of efficient pieces on offense. And their new quarterback, John Paddock, has at least played some snaps. He got 48 snaps last year. But there's no proven playmakers on offense. Now, can you develop some? Absolutely. Uh, they were insanely balanced last year. Like this, <laughs> I looked at this. They had 444 rushes last year to 440 passes. So they were they were 50-50 rushing and passing, but they only averaged 4.98 yards per play. That was number 113 in the FBS. You got to improve consistency. You got to be more explosive on offense. Uh, and then the defense. I mean, it does not get better on that side. They lost six of eight snap leaders at linebacker. Their top three defensive backs are gone. Two of their top three offensive linemen are gone. Um, they only brought in two defensive transfers. So this will certainly be a youth movement, which which New has done, and it, you know, capped off with that 2020 uh, season that was, you know, 7-1, and one, ended up winning the bowl game. All the, It was great. But is, is Ball State just going to be one of those teams that – has to rebuild, and then every four years they get a chance to compete for the conference title. Uh, it certainly looks like that's the direction he's going. They got five defensive linemen with over 200 snaps last year, but only two linebackers and three defensive backs. Uh, and that is from a defense that was, I mean, that was bad. They have got to figure out something in the secondary this year. Uh, brother, they were number 100 in defensive PPA per drive, but they were also number 108 in offensive PPA per drive. Like... <laughs> It just makes no sense. Uh, it, they returned basically everybody last year. The offensive line injuries hurt them quite a bit last year, but but the defense was so bad. Um, there was nothing, really, that they were good at other than their turnover margin was number 25 in the country, and they were number 22 in penalties per game. Like, they were that stuff that's really well coached. So it, they're a well-coached team, I guess, fundamentally, but without real playmakers, I don't know that I expect any kind of improvement. They went six and seven last year and lost the bowl game. I, I've got them at four and eight, and I think that might be generous. Like, where are you looking for this team? All right, so we we differ a little bit here too. I've got them five and six, one game better than you. Um, four? How'd you get to four and eight? Oh, I guess at five and seven. Yeah, five right, and seven. Yeah. My, 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 I, for somehow I didn't count a loss uh, somewhere. I got them five and seven. Um, and and I don't think they're going to be great, but I don't, you know, I think that's a little over market correction. Like last year, we thought they would be world beaters and win this conference. And this year, like, there's a world where five and seven could be the worst team in this division. But you know, I, mean, I don't I don't know that it's just going to swing that far. I think at some point in time they're going to level out. They're going to find a way to win a couple of ball games that we're not expecting. And but some of that's because I think all these teams are capable of dropping a game, winning a game. Like, I, I just don't see anybody as a juggernaut here. I, I mean, don't. you're not wrong there. You're not wrong on that. I, I looked at their schedule. They play – these are their road conference games. At Central Michigan, at Kent State, at Toledo, at Miami of Ohio. And then you've still got Western Michigan at home, which, you know, Western Michigan is losing a lot, but I still think they've got a better roster than uh, than Ball State. Uh, they got to play at Tennessee, 
They've got at Georgia Southern, which I've actually got as a win for them because it's early enough in the season. Uh, you got to play Northern Illinois at home. Like your your other non conference win that I believe is uh, is UConn, UConn and Murray State. Like you got those, but I mean this is a rough stretch that they got to go on. Um, you do get Eastern Michigan at home, and you get Ohio at home. So you know, could they win both of those? Absolutely. Uh, but I just did. Man, they lost so much last year, and I just have not. It's just, it's, I, I guess where you and I differ is I don't put that much weight on home field advantage for all these teams. I've seen way too many of these teams. It, it, it's not like 100,000 strong are going to be out here. Now, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think, I just don't think the fact that, oh, well, they're just going to lose all their, home, their road games, like their only possible wins are home games. That doesn't make any sense to me because I watch it happen every year. That's okay. I can I can get with you. It's not so much the road home stuff. It is, man. It was already pretty difficult anyway going against those teams that are a lot more stacked than this roster. Um, and then you put in that added element of, you know, then yeah, then you got to travel. Hang on. But that's what that's what you you think those rosters are more stacked. Just like we thought Ball State was stacked last year. But we don't know. We don't know until they start yeah. playing. Yeah. No. You're you're correct. You're correct. We we whiffed on Ball State quite a bit last year. I think I had them going eight and four, and they, I mean they went six and six, but you know, still uh, still not quite up to expectation last season. They just they were not good across the board any any of the stats. So uh, I mean, I'm got- one game different than you, but I would bet that I would I would if I had to bet right now, I bet they would be more likely to go six and six than four and eight. Like I'd rather I I think they'd win one more game than I think they would. Over or lose a game, I think they would. So you, uh, you a big believer in Mike New, huh? I don't know if that's a big believer though. Like six and six is not a big believer in anybody. Six that's and true. six in a in a in a in a MAC team. Come on, <laughs> what is that a believer in? That's that's a believer in every team is the exact same. So it's so yes. they'll basically all end up six and six. But uh, but I've said that. Like I, they're, yeah, I don't, they're not all going to end up six and six. But I I I think at best a team is going to to win two games more than they lose in this in this situation, in okay. this division. I no, don't no, see I'm anybody be... being three or four games better than everybody else That's a, on the, this side of the ball. It's a valid point. It is a valid point. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.